Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. Well, man, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. And yeah. I want to begin our conversation before we get into your life and your work with living through the pandemic. We're coming on four years. How did you mm -hmm. get through those years and how did it change you? Great question. How I got through them is by kind of trying to avoid the pandemic as much as possible. So obviously I had the first year here I, in Canada and then after about a year of the pandemic, so March of 2021, um, you know, started March of 2020, I just had enough and I went down to Florida and I spent three months there. And uh, I spent three months in Florida. It was completely open under Ron DeSantis. And uh, the rest of my colleagues and friends in Vancouver were still locked up. Everyone was wearing masks. And I was actually just playing tennis every day down there and enjoying life. Made a lot of great friends. And then I came back up here for about a month. Uh, and then I went to Eastern Europe, to Serbia, where my family's originally from. Again, it was completely open. Their policies were very simple. You want to get vaccinated, you don't. You want to wear a mask, you don't. Complete freedom. Do whatever the hell you want to do. We won't mandate you to do anything. You're sick in your 90s, stay at home. If you're young and healthy, go to the gym, live your life. Stayed there. And I was there for the summer. And I was planning to fly back to Canada. And my family called me and said, hey, they're going back into lockdowns here. Gyms are closing, you know, and I dealt with that, you know, wearing a mask. I had so many altercations at, with gym members, not gym members, gym staff. You know, I'd be working out. My heart rate would be 190. I would pull my mask down to breathe, you know, and the guy would come to me and say, put your mask on. Or like, he was Australian. Hey, am I, you got to put your mask on. And I would just, it, after weeks, after weeks, I remember one time I erupted on him. I said, buddy, if I put my mask on, I'm going to pass out and bang my head here. My heart rate's 182. I can't even speak how much my heart rate was. And this was the the lack of awareness for people. And I would just get fed up. So I didn't come back to Canada. I spent a year out there. I was blessed. to. I have so many friends and family out there and stayed. I have a, a, an apartment out there and I stayed out there for a year. I flew back to Vancouver for... Um, my first cousin's wedding in May of 2023. And then um, I've been here ever since. And then I went back to Serbia for the summer to see friends and now everything. By then COVID was already kind of over and everything was open up. So that's how I avoided it. I just kind of flew to jurisdictions and luckily, you know, I have a couple of passports. I, I got to go to places where things were open. So right on, man. So let me ask you, you know, I guess that's the one thing I was thinking too, during this whole pandemic time, all these people would go out to eat, you wear masks in, and then you have them off the whole time to eat and drink. It's like, come on, like, there was logistical fallacies that went into so many things that we did during that time. It just, it didn't make any sense. And yeah, I mean, it's like, it, it, it's like you said, you got to breathe, you got to have, you know, I, I don't know. And there's a part of me too, Fauci said probably two years ago, everybody's going to get this, okay? Whether we want herd immunity or not, it's going to happen. And it's happening, happens with all of these things that get transferred virally. It's just, it's, it's, but anyway. That... But what really, you know, shined light to me was the lack of critical thinking and human logic. And I really realized that a lot of people, unfortunately, are sheep. They don't actually have the ability to sit down and say, government official told me this. You know, one thing my aunt taught me, my great aunt, anytime the government's telling you to do something, you should probably do the opposite. Yeah. When in human history has the government ever, you know, had the best intention for their people? And the big, huge, you know, international story that happened is, I don't know if you can see my phone, but it's a picture with me and Novak Djokovic, who was like yeah. my childhood, you know, greatest tennis player of all time. That's taken out the US Open after he won this year. When he got deported from Australia, one of the healthiest, fittest people on planet Earth, the greatest tennis player of all time, was deemed as a health risk. Like that logic, that thought process is is so broken that people that were like, yeah, deport him, da, da, da. You're broken. Your mind doesn't work properly. Yeah. And that's what COVID showed me that. But the good thing is a lot of people are waking up. A lot of people can actually, instead of just taking, hey, you need to do this, stop, think for a second, why do I need to do this? Yeah. What is this person's intentions for me? Do they have an agenda? And then see, yeah. you know, right? So, Absolutely. So at the end of the day, I know that you're a coach, but if I put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day, and yeah. one of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How mm -hmm. do you answer that child? 
Great question. I would tell them I help people become the best version of themselves. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? In the third grade, uh, NBA player. Okay. NBA, yeah. So let me let me ask you this. If you could go back in time and see one NBA game, where are you going? If I can go back in time and see one NBA, well, what a great question. Oh, uh, honestly, probably Michael Jordan versus the Utah Jazz game, game six. Yeah. That's always the answer. It's one of the top answers, you know? Because he's the GOAT. I know a yeah. lot of LeBron people are going, but LeBron, no. Jordan yeah. had that killer instinct. And Jordan, Kobe, these are people I really resonate with. But probably that, that would be the game. Or Kobe's, I watched on TV, actually. This is a true story. I watched the Kobe 81-point game live on TV because I grew up in Canada. So we get every Raptors game is yeah. broadcast on TV. And the games always started when I got home from school. You know, game started at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'd get home around 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific, which is 7 p.m. Eastern. I'd turn the TV on, and the Raptors game would always be starting. And I remember that day vividly when Kobe dropped 81. That's awesome. So yeah. take me back to your childhood. How did you get this motivation to, to be health conscious and to get to a point where this was going to be your life? How did that happen? You know, it, it wasn't really, in, you know, in childhood, I was always competitive. I was always an athlete. Anyone that knows me, I'd love to play sports my whole life. I was competitive in everything I've done, you know, from video games to sports to school. What happened was once I transitioned from being a collegiate athlete to the work life and I studied finance and I'm going down that sector, I saw the writing on the wall. I saw the guys when I was 24 that were 34, 44, 50 and what their health looked like, what their lives looked like, their energy levels. And it really scared me. I said, oh my God, I don't want to be like that. Why is every guy in finance that I know not fit? Why, why is it like finance or fitness? Like you can't have both. People always told me that you don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. I said, why is this a choice? Why can't I be elite in everything? Why can't I be wealthy and good financially and good in fitness and good with my family? So for me, it was, it was really three or four years of working in the financial sector, kind of letting myself go, letting go of my discipline and, you know, realizing, Hey, I need to make a change. No more reading books, no more watching videos. I actually have to implement the system and do something to change my life. And that was about a year and a half to two years ago. And uh, when I did that, you know, I just didn't tell anyone about it completely changed the way I live, the day, you know, how I go to bed, what I eat, how I exercise, my mindset. And people kept asking me, oh my God, you're, you're, you look great. You lost weight. You lost weight. You lost weight. Cause I, I lost about 25 pounds. Most people don't know. And um, they're like, you have so much energy. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then I realized, Hey, you know, let me help other people. So I just want to help as many people as possible. People kept asking me, hey, what do you do? What do you do for this? What do you do for that? What do you do for this? What do you do? I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. Can I wake up in the morning? Can I train like you? And I just said, hey, a lot of people need help. Let me help as many people as possible. So it's kind of how it started. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Definitely Novak Djokovic, uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, Tom Brady. These are people that I looked up to growing up as a child, their discipline, their work ethic. Um, yeah, probably those, those are my childhood, uh, heroes. Then also, obviously my father for sure. Uh, Nikola Tesla as well. Everything that he did. Um, yeah. So if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now and spend time with them, who would it be? One person alive? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Djokovic, but I met him already. So uh, I would say Tom Brady. Okay. What was Djokovic like? Super, super nice. Uh, super humble, uh, very, very funny, likes to joke around, really good energy, really positive energy, and just really, really gracious, really gracious. I think uh, you sit next to him, you're like, wow, this is guy has broken every record in his sport. He's you know, the greatest of all time in what he does. And he's just like, you know, shooting the, you know, having a great conversation with people, joking here, joking there. I absolutely love that, that you, you never know. You know, people are stopping him. He's taking photos with everybody. He's tra cracking jokes. So absolute, absolute pleasure to be around. You know, minutes after he won that championship, he was like, I'm going back home to Serbia. And then yeah. 
Then a couple of days later, I think it was the next day, I still, this is the funniest press conference. I don't know if you saw it where they were asking him about what's going to be your reaction when you see everybody in Denver in a parade. And he like went like this and he was like, what are no, you that's, talking about? Uh, you're talking about Jokic, right? So Jokic, yeah. is, uh, I'm talking about Jokovic, the tennis player. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Jokic. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I got I got the yeah, I was just I I, know. I was dialed Sorry. in on him. Yeah, but... yeah, Jokic, but haven't met Jokic, but I did go to the NBA finals. I like that okay. you bring up. So I did go to game two of the NBA finals in Denver this year as well. Another blessing. And uh he's hilarious too. I know people that know him uh personally. And uh yeah, he's like, I'm just gonna go home, I'm gonna, you know, enjoy my horses parade oh i gotta go to a parade yeah yeah <laughs> yeah he's he, thrown off yeah he's a funny cat but uh you know that again he's also another humble guy he, yeah you know, in his lane he likes what to do you know basketball's just, you know a job for him he said it many times in an interview like this is my job you know i like it and i go and do other things after yeah that's it for sure <laughs> so let me ask you this what's your motivation every day to wake up to be you to help people and to ultimately evolve Absolutely. My motivation is very simple. I do everything for my family, uh, my parents. I want to retire them. Um, you know, my brother, I want to, you know, help him out as much as possible, emotionally, financially, everybody. I do everything for my family. And then my goal is obviously to start my own family one day, hopefully soon. And uh, I just be present in their lives. My future wife, my children, I want to have a very large family. Uh, I want to have, you know, many, many kids. So I just want to be very present in their life. And I understand in the society we live in, money does not buy happiness, but definitely raising a bunch of children, being financially secure and stable will help you. And the only reason I want to be financially, people ask me, well, why do you want to be successful? Why do you want to make a lot of money? Not really to buy nice cars and things. Great. Those things are obviously bonuses. You know, I'm not going to lie and say I don't like a nice sports car or whatever, but it's really to be present in their lives where I don't have to go into an office 10 hours or 12 hours a day. If my son wants to become a professional basketball player, tennis player, an actor, whatever the hell he wants to do in life, I can dedicate my time to, to raising him and give him maximum energy. As a coach, what's been your favorite success story? As a coach, what's been my favorite success story? There's a lot of them. Probably, probably one of my clients that, you know, he, this is a funny story. He, he was a guy that wasn't very confident um, and single guy, you know, wants to find again, his, you know, his future wife, his girlfriend. And um, he told me a story where he saw a really beautiful girl on an airplane when he was flying and uh, he wanted to approach her and he didn't. And he told me, he's like, I, I don't know why I had doubt in my head, you know? And then about two months later, we've been working together. He got in better shape. He's more confident. He saw another girl and he approached her and he was, you know, went up to her dead set with confidence, got her number. And what I love about this story is people will say, okay, yeah, he got his number, but it's, it's how he got the number for those two months. He worked on himself. He, he woke up early. He trained hard. He slept well. He, he was mindful of what he was eating and the true confidence came. I think a lot of times we hear the word confidence and people think it's just something, oh, I could turn it on or I can yell an affirmation to myself and oh, I'm confident. That's going to wear off. And that's what I like to call surface level confidence. It's not going to last. The only way you build true confidence is you do what you're supposed to do every single day. And I love hearing stories like that. And he's up every morning. He's training hard now. I think he's down like 20 pounds already. So 20, 25 pounds from when we started. So I love hearing stories like that. And I love getting messages from clients. I'm in the gym. They're sending me selfies. I mean, let's go. And it fires me up. So right yeah. on, man. So of yeah. all of the things that you've done in your life up to this point, what are you the proudest of? What am I the proudest of? Oof, that's a tough one. Um, hmm. I would just say maybe helping people so far. I mean, I went to university. I graduated, but... The proudest thing I'm just being a good son uh, to my parents, being a good brother uh, to my brother, obviously being a good friend um, to my best friend. You know, I want to always be someone that people can rely on moving forward. I feel like anytime someone needs from something from me, they need a phone call. I always want to be the person that answers that phone. Hey, I need your help. It's two in the morning. No, no problem. What do you need? And just help people out and, and really get them to elevate. So 
Yeah, but just be being present, energetic, and supportive to uh, people closest to me. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's mm -hmm. your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Great question. Who do I think I am? I think I'm somebody who's never satisfied, someone who's always chasing, trying to evolve and get better, um, someone who's driven and very growth oriented. Uh, it's very hard for me to sit still. I would say, you know, I don't do the two week vacations laying on the beach. I said this to a friend that sounds like torture to me <laughs> just because it's just too, too boring. But I just feel like someone who's always in constant pursuit of greatness and I'm never satisfied. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the seasons of life. I always want to continue to grow and set new challenges for myself because I think, you know, life, you know, I don't know the, the, the what is the meaning of life is a very, you know, open-ended question. But for me, it's just the constant pursuit of getting better. And yeah. enjoying the process and doing it with a smile on my face, having good positive energy. That's what I love. I love it. Luca, thank you so much. Before we get out of the door here, how can people hire you, learn more about you, reach out, anything about your world? 100%. They can reach out to me on uh, Instagram. Uh, I have an account. It's my name, Luca Petkovic, L U K A P E T K O V I C 95 at gmail.com. They can email me at luca at valiantwellness.com. They can go to valiantwellness.com. Um, TikTok, uh, YouTube Shorts, they can message me, yeah, by email. Any, anyway. Right on. Luca, this has been great, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a great year, man. You too, man. Thank you so Take much. Care. Take care. Take care.